Hey guys, and welcome back to another season of Discovery Gold Farming video. In this one, I've got a really special video for you guys. We're going to be going over the top 10 best gold farms in phase three of season of Discovery. They're not in any specific order. And before we get into it, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to everyone that has gotten a copy of my season of Discovery Gold Guide. It really means a lot. Let's start the video off and start looking at the gold farms. So the first gold farm is going to be the Fell Cloth Gold Farm. The Fell Cloth has a 8% chance to drop from these mobs. It's mainly used to make moon cloth and many other crafts with professions. You're also going to get a bunch of rune cloth when you're doing this farm. It has a 46% drop chance from the mobs that we're going to be farming. Where this farm is located is over in Fellwood at this location right here. You're going to be farming the mobs that are shown on the screen right now and there is a bunch of them spread out around this location. Now what you can do when doing this farm is you can either AOE farm these guys or single target farm these guys. It really doesn't make too much of a difference. The mobs are around level 53 and they're very easy to farm. You could definitely come here on a fresh level 50 and have the time of your life farming these guys without any issues whatsoever. As you can see, we just got a fell cloth right then, and also two rune cloth from the one mob. We actually get a back-to-back -back fell cloth drop from two mobs, and we get two fell cloth. Overall, this is a really good steady gold farm. If you want to come here and grind out for an hour or so, you're going to know that you're going to make a decent amount of steady gold no matter what when doing this farm. Especially just from the rune cloth, that adds up quite quickly. But the main gold is going to be from the fell cloth, which sells for a decent amount of gold on all realms. Let's move on to the next gold farm. So gold farm number two is the Big Mouth Clam gold farm. You're mainly going to be looking for the golden pearls here, but I would highly recommend having skinning at this farm. If you have skinning, you can get thick leather, turtle scales, rugged leather, and also thick hide. These all sell for a lot of gold. You also get a venerable item, which once you have five of these, it actually vendors for 45 silver. So this adds up and gives you a decent amount of raw gold just from vendoring these items. So the mobs that we're going to be farming are the turtles in Tanaris. I like to farm these guys right down on the south part of Tanaris at a somewhat secret location. So I'll show you right now how to actually get down to this location. There's only going to be other people that are farming these that have seen this video. There's no quest down here. There's no other reason for someone else to be down at this location. Once you get down here, you're going to see a bunch of turtles. I'm talking about a bunch. They're absolutely everywhere. They level range from around level 48 to 50, and they're very, very easy to farm. They only hit you with melee, and so you can pretty much AOE farm these guys really good on a mage or any class with some AOE. Now, I would highly recommend only doing this farm if you have skinning, because that is going to be where the majority of the gold is going to be coming from, is from skinning. Turtle scales are used to make some items that are used in the waylaid supplies for phase three. So these are worth a lot of gold. On top of that, the thick leather and also the rugged leather is used for a bunch of the professions in phase three, and these have a really good price. And that is what is going to be making the majority of your gold. But on top of that, you do have a chance of getting some good BOEs. So some green, some blues, and some purples from these guys. And then if you're lucky enough to get your hands on a golden pearl from the Big Mouth Clams, they also sell for a decent amount of gold. But like I said, I would highly recommend only doing this farm if you have skinning, because that is where the real gold is going to be coming from with this farm. And that is going to be from skinning the mobs, and also, like I mentioned before, there are a few vendor items that do sell for a decent amount of gold to the vendor that you get a bunch of whilst doing this farm. So go ahead, grab your skinning knife and head over to this location if you have skinning on one of your characters and give this farm a go. It is actually a really, really good gold farm. And you also have a chance of getting the golden pearls and some really good BOEs. All right, so let's move on to the third gold farm. So the third gold farm doesn't require any professions. And this is going to be a golden pearl gold farm over in Ashara. 
at this location right here, you're going to find a bunch of nuggets across the bank. Now the main item that you're going to be looking for is the big mouth clams to get the golden pearls and also the zesty clam meat is inside of every single one of the big mouth clams and they also sell for a decent amount of gold because they are used in a waylaid supply item so they do have a somewhat decent demand for them. On top of them though you're going to have a bit higher level mobs so the BOEs that you get from these guys are really good for phase 3. So you're going to make a decent amount of gold just from the BOEs you can get from these guys. Even the green BOEs are definitely worth selling in phase 3 because of the level of them. You also have a chance of getting some blues and also some purples from these guys. If you're lucky enough to get your hands on those, they'll really bump up the amount of gold that you make from doing this farm. You also actually get a decent amount of raw gold just from raw gold that you loot from these mobs. But the main thing that you're going to be relying on to make the gold when doing this farm is definitely the golden pearls. Now golden pearls are used in a bunch of crafts with a lot of different professions. So they have a really good price on most realms and they have a really good demand. As you can see we actually just got a green right then, so a level 49 shield. Now this could sell for a decent amount of gold, the market value is 19 gold at the moment. Moving on to the fourth farm. This is going to be the Living Essence farm. You also have a chance of getting some really good BOEs at this farm. Now Living Essence only has a 2% drop chance from these mobs, but is one of the best Living Essence farms that you can do in phase three. This is another RNG farm though. Here are some of the purples that you can get from here. And if you're lucky enough to get your hands on these, these can sell for a lot of gold. Like I'm talking about a lot of gold. So let's go ahead and have a look at some of the drop chances for the items. 2% uh, on the Living Essences, you also have your Healing Potions and your Mana Potions. And they actually drop a wide range of herbs. So pretty much all the herbs in the game can actually drop from these guys. On top of that, you also have your Scrolls, your Scroll of Strength 3, and your Scroll of Agility 3. And as you can see, here are the BOEs, the Purples, that are a lot rarer, but if you are lucky enough to get your hands on these, they can sell for some ridiculous amounts of gold. Especially because we're so early into phase 3 at the moment, these epics will sell for a lot of gold and you shouldn't have any trouble whatsoever selling them. The hard part will be is actually getting them to drop because they are somewhat rare from these mobs, but this is one of the best spots to farm for BOEs, rare items such as BOEs and also the Living Essence. Living essences are used in professions and sell really well. Moving on to the next farm. Now this is a bit different. This is going to be how to make gold from the nightmare incursions. So for example, we're going to be doing the one in Ashenvale. There is a few other locations, but how to make gold. So with skinning, you can get the dream infused dragon scales. Then also if you have herbalism, you can get the dream root. Now there is actually another version too for mining and that is going to be this item right here, the Fool's Gold Dust. So these are actually quest items for the Nightmare Incursions. However, they can be sold if you trade them to people. They can't be sold on the auction house, so you're going to have to pretty much sell them to people through trade. So this is actually really easy to do and I'll show you how to do it. Personally, I have skinning, so I did the dream infused dragon scales. Now what you want to do is you want to head inside of the nightmare incursion. If you're doing skinning, you want to head over to this location right here. And this is where you're going to find all the dragons that are actually skinnable. Now the good thing about when skinning these mobs is that you get more than one of the item. As you can see, we just got four right there. And we'll see what we get off this next one. We got a thick hide, uh, a thick lever. So you could also get the other things from skinning the mobs, but the main items that are gonna be making the gold when doing this are the quest items, or that are used for the quest. So in this, for this example with skinning, it's going to be the dream infused dragon scales. Now all of the different dragons here have a chance to actually drop them when you skin them. Now what you wanna do is you wanna sell them to other people. So what I've found to be the best way to do this is head inside of the Nightmare Incursion at the bottom of the steps, just below the portal. Make a macro something like this, saying that you're selling 
the dragon uh, the dream infused dragon scales for 10 because they need they need 10 to complete the quest for a certain amount of gold the amount of gold you can charge will change as we go throughout um, phase 3 but for an example we're selling 10 right now for 5 gold each this person just bought 30 of them we can even bump up the price a bit higher we're going to sell them for 10 gold for 10 so this is 1 gold each and as you can see people are still willing to actually pay 10 gold for only 10 of them so you can even make a lot more gold now the prices that you can get will fluctuate from realm to realm I'm on one of the most high populated realms and I've been able to get anywhere from 10 gold in between 5 to 10 gold for a stack of 10 of these which is really good and it's made me around 3,000 gold at the start of phase 3 so really good way to make some gold moving on to the 6 gold farm this is going to be another felcloth gold farm over in Ashara so these are the mobs that we're going to be farming and they have a 9% drop chance to actually drop the fell cloth which is a tiny bit higher or 1% higher than the other location shown in the video the fell cloth is mainly used for moon cloth and a bunch of other crafts with the professions you're also going to get once again a bunch and a bunch of rune cloth but you also have a chance at getting the elixir of mongoose this has a 5% drop chance so it's actually pretty common from these guys and like I mentioned a bunch and a bunch of rune cloth like I'm talking rune cloth city you're gonna have a bunch of rune cloth so these are the mobs that we're going to be farming in this location they're a bit lower level than the other fell cloth location so they are a bit easier to farm there's three camps with these mobs that you can actually farm the fell cloth so if one camp has too much competition, you can just go ahead and move over to another camp and see which camp has basically the less competition. But this is a really, really good steady gold farm in phase three. Moving on to the seventh gold farm, this is going to be the essence of water gold farm in Felwood. Now this is a really, really good gold farm. The essence of water has a 6% drop chance to drop from these mobs and it sells for a lot of gold. I was getting around 40 to 50 gold each for these on my realm, which is really good considering how many of these you can actually get within an hour. The mobs are around level 54, so I would highly recommend only coming here if you have some decent gear and are actually able to kill some level 54s. They don't do too much damage. They do have a poison that does overtime damage on you, which can get somewhat annoying. You just need to keep an eye on that. So if you don't have any healing, that could be an issue. As you can see, we just got an essence of water for 41 gold. And we can actually get a back-to-back -back essence of water right here. So the 8% drop chance is actually really good. And it's still RNG, obviously. But in the clip right now, you can see that I managed to get a back-to-back -back essence of water drop, which equals 52 gold in two kills, which is absolutely insane. Also, the BOEs from these guys are really good because of the level. Moving on to the next gold farm, the 8th gold farm. This is going to be another Living Essence and BOE gold farm. This one actually has a bit higher drop chance than the previous video. And the main item that we're going to be after is the Living Essence. And these sell extremely good on the auction house, like we've talked in the last uh, the last farm you also get some potions your mana potions your healing potions these sell really good on top of that you also get the scrolls so you have your scroll of strength three and your scroll of agility three these also are in very high demand in phase three and sell for a decent amount of gold now for the big rng items you're gonna have a chance of getting the traveler's backpack which is a 16 slot bag which can get a lot of gold for a lot of people are after this bag and then also you have some really good BOEs that you can get from these guys as you can see here are the BOEs the purple BOEs but the green BOEs and the blue BOEs are really good also you also get a wide range of different herbs from these mobs pretty much all the different herbs in the game so we'll just go through here if you want to have a look at some of the drop chances for some of these items you can go ahead and check out the drop chances right now but the rare items that are worth a lot do have a low drop chance but if you're lucky enough to get your hands on them you're looking at a really really big payday from these mobs 
Now with this farm, you want to make sure that you're farming the higher level mobs, the warp wood shredders, and these are outside of the cave. So if you look in the background right now, there is a cave. They have some lower level mobs. You want to make sure you're at the front of the cave, and this has the higher level mobs, the level 53s and 54. These have a bit higher drop chance on the items that we're after. And also the BOEs that you get from these guys are the perfect range level for phase three. So they're gonna be the best and most expensive BOEs you can actually get in phase three. So that is why I highly recommend focusing on the mobs outside of the, outside of the cave, which are the warp wood shredders, which are a bit higher level than the ones that are inside of the cave. Just for the main reason, they have a higher drop chance on the living essence, and they also have a bit better BOEs because of the range level, the, the combat level of these guys, making the BOEs a bit higher level, which make them a lot better for phase three. Some of the items are actually best for phase three. Moving on to the ninth gold farm. This is going to be a steady gold farm, and you also can farm a decent amount of rep from doing this farm. This is over in Western Plaguelands. So you're gonna get a bunch of rune cloth, and this sells really good, obviously, in phase three. You also have a chance of getting a few other items like your major healing potions and your superior mana potions. These also sell really good in phase three at the moment. You also get your scroll of agility three and your scroll of agility, oh, and your scroll of strength three, sorry. These also sell really, really well. Um, you have a chance of getting this recipe too, but I'm not too, I'm not too sure how much of a demand this will be in in phase three, but you have a decent chance of actually getting your hands on this recipe. Now you're gonna be also farming the Argent Dawn rep, which can be used to buy some really good items and things that are really useful in phase three. So when doing this farm, you're kind of making gold and you're farming rep at the same time. So it's a two in one gold farm. Now there is actually a fence that you can use to do some AOE pulling and take no damage. So as you can see, what you want to do is jump back and forth over the fence and the mobs will just pretty much run around the fence trying to reach you. This is a really good way to actually AOE farm these guys and you can do this on a lot of different classes with AOE well, overtime abilities. So even on a priest or something like that where you can dot up the mobs, really works really good on doing this, um, this fence method. Uh, the mobs have a extremely, extremely quick respawn rate when doing this farm. So there's pretty much zero downtime. You'll see in this clip right here, that the mobs will start respawning right away before I even finish off the mobs. That is how quick these guys respawn here, which is really good for gold farming. Even with competition around, you're going to have pretty much unlimited amount of mobs to farm when doing this farm. So this is actually a really good steady gold farm, especially right now while the price of rune cloth is so high. And like I mentioned before, you also get your reputation for the Argent Dawn, which is very useful at the same time as making some gold. So overall, this is a really, really good gold farm to do, and I'd highly recommend coming here and farming your, your reputation here, and obviously making a decent amount of gold at the same time. Moving on to the 10th farm and the final farm, this is gonna be the Blasted Lands farm. So there are some quests right here that reward some really good buffs for phase three that a lot of people are after. Now the buff can't actually be traded, so the item that gives a buff can't be traded, but the items to complete these quests can be traded and they can be sold on the auction house. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be farming the items that are required to complete these quests to then get the buffs. We're gonna be farming these items and selling them on the auction house to people that wanna get their hands on this buff. So this is over in the Blasted Lands and here's the location of all the different mobs. And there's five different mobs that we're gonna be farming in this farm. Here are the five different items that are required to complete the quest and these are what are gonna be making the majority of the gold but I would highly recommend having skinning when doing this farm. So I'll go through and I'll show you each mob and their location. So here's the first mob that we wanna be farming and they all drop a different item that is required for the quest endings. We have the hyenas here. These are up more in the north spot, basically where you pick up the quest. Moving on to the next mob are the scorpions. These have two locations, one up north and one southeast, down a bit further. 
Moving on to the next mob that you want to be farming are the boars. These are over on the east side of Blasted Lands, um, a bit further away from the other mobs. And then also at this exact same location, you have the basilisk, which are also at the same location once again on the east side of Blasted Lands. Now when doing this farm, like I mentioned before, I'd highly recommend having skinning because you're going to be able to get rugged leather, thick leather, and also scorpion scales. And also some thick hide, but the thick hide has a lot lower drop chance. So the high inners drop your thick leather, your rugged leather, and your thick hide. Then the other mobs, the scorpions, these are the only ones that have a different um, drop table for skinning. You can get the scorpion scales from these guys at a 40% drop chance. Then we have the boars, which just have thick leather, rugged leather, and thick hide. And then we also have the basilisk which also have the exact same drops when they are skinned. And now with the skinning, this will really increase the amount of gold you make from this farm. But overall, this would have to be one of the best gold farms in phase three at the moment. These items sell extremely quick on the auction house and they're actually pretty easy to farm. The mobs range from around level 45 all the way up to 50. So they're very, very easy to farm on your level 50. You could even come here at like say level 45 and grind your last five levels at this location whilst making a lot of gold. This gold farm has personally made me around 2k gold and I've only done it for a few days. And it's a really, really good gold farm to do and I would highly recommend coming here and giving this gold farm a go if you wanna make some really good gold. But once again, I would highly recommend only doing this farm if you have skinning because it really increases the amount of gold that you make from actually doing this farm. You also have a chance of getting giant eggs, which they also have been selling for a decent amount of gold for me. But the main items that we're after, obviously, are the quest hand in items and also the skinning items. So as you can see, there is just a bunch of these mobs spread out absolutely everywhere. So if you have a class that can do some AoE farming, this could work really good when doing this farm because there's such high density of these mobs. It's a really, really easy to get a good pack together and do some easy AOE farming on these guys. There's no casters, so they're very, very easy to AOE farm, especially on a mage like I'm doing right here, just Kona Cold AOE farming these guys. It's actually a very, very easy and chill farm to do. And I'd highly recommend coming here and giving this one a go. So overall, let's have a recap of the video. So 10 really good gold farms to do in phase three. All of them have their own things and their unique ways to make them good. Some of the best gold farms I would say would be this one, the, the Turtles in Tanaris. It's also made me thousands of gold. Also, the quest items in the Nightmare Incursions is really good. So that would probably be my top three out of these gold farms that have made me personally the most amount of gold in phase three so far. Let me know down in the comments what has been your most successful gold farm in phase three so far. I'd really love to know. But that was it for the video. If you enjoyed, hit a thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel. And if you would like to learn more in depth ways to make gold in seasonal discovery, you can check out my complete seasonal discovery gold guide, which goes over all of the best methods to make gold in seasonal discovery. This is constantly updated and if you already own a copy, you get all future updates completely for free. You also get access to a private Discord where we help each other out with gold making in all versions of World of Warcraft. Until the next one, guys, take care. And good luck in Phase 3, and I hope you make a lot of gold.